So we're here. Preseason six is finally upon us. This offseason slash preseason slash whatever you want to call it has already had some pretty exciting things happen on pretty much every front of the game. Between Doublelift leaving CLG and joining TSM, the new mastery system, the reworked AD carries, the new boss monster, almost every item being changed in both stats and cost, upcoming deformed solo queue, 5.5 fucking K dude, and the incredibly short snowball -y games, it has been a lot to take in. I myself have been taking it in through feeding miserably in solo queue, which I try and blame on the fact that I am transitioning roles from top to mid slash AD carry, which has been pretty tricky to do in a preseason where one of those roles is being reworked. But personal issues aside, objectively speaking, this has actually been one of the craziest, most chaotic preseasons we've seen in League of Legends history. Between all the changes we've seen, some of which aren't even in the game yet, this preseason will have a bigger effect on the state of the game than any other preseason we've seen thus far. If you think back to early seasons, preseasons, and see some of the quote-unquote drastic changes that Riot has made in the past, you can see a little bit of why these changes in particular might feel like they're getting really out of hand really quickly. Riot has done some pretty drastic stuff before, reworking roles, huge champion updates, item updates, rune page updates, mastery updates. Hell, they've even given us an entirely new map just a year ago or so, but out of all the changes we've seen, this season has something that's made it a hundred times more chaotic. When you take a look at the roles that Riot has tried to adjust, rework, or tune, you see two that they've been kind of obsessed over during all previous seasons, jungle and support. These two roles are very self-contained roles, meaning that if you want to rework how one of them is played, you can do so very easily without having that much of an effect on the rest of the game. I mean, the items, masteries, and champions used in these roles are all very unusual and specific to that role, so you can completely change the masteries that supports are going to use, you can completely redo the entirety of the jungle creeps and make sweeping series of changes to items without having that much of an effect on the rest of the game. No top laner is going to try the new support masteries because they're not going to have any use for them the same way that no middle laner is going to start off buying a skirmisher saber. Because these roles were so self-contained, Riot was able to make some pretty big drastic changes to the way that they were played throughout the years without having to fine tune specific champions outside the usual balance changes. And although the roles might have changed drastically from one season to another, the rest of the game pretty much stayed intact. All of that is thrown out the window this preseason. This time, Riot decided to rework AD carries, a role that's not just going to be another self-contained change. Yeah, you can do what Riot did before, mess around with some masteries, maybe change some stuff with items that AD carries always buy, like Infinity Edge, and add some new AD items to the game to change the role in that kind of way. But the issue here is that those masteries are actually going to also be useful on a lot of top laners that scale with AD, a lot of assassins that go mid lane, and junglers too. Infinity Edge is bought by other non-AD carry champions like Yasuo, and any new attack damage bonus giving items will also be useful on other bruisers, junglers, and AD mid laners out there. Because of this, if Riot is actually going to be changing the AD carry role in a drastic enough way to changing the way that it's played, they're going to have to go in and rework specific individual kits the way that they've done, and anyone who remembers the not-too-distant reworked Rise will have fond memories of how the balance team is struggling a little bit with the balance of their reworked champions. Now you have almost every single AD carry in the game having some sort of reworked element in their kit. Again, that isn't going to be self-contained. I mean, a lot of these champions already went down mid lane or top lane for lane dominance or for good matchups. Now you're going to have a lot of people experimenting with this. You're going to have a lot more AD carries in the mid and top lane. Graves is now jungling, taking all sorts of AD carries in all sorts of roles. And hey, I mean, some of these guys are going to be OP, some of them maybe not so much, but they're always going to get the those new items and crit you every fucking time. I mean, the game has gotten pretty crazy so far, and we haven't even experienced all of the changes. I'm writing this video two days after the changes went live, and we still haven't seen some of the more drastic changes implemented that Riot's gonna give us, like, the whole new way to queue for games that eliminates the solo in solo queue. These changes have been pretty ridiculous, and I don't know if I mean ridiculous in a good way or a bad way yet. Honestly, it could be either. I think Riot kinda got tired of hearing so many people 
people bitch and moan about, oh, League is slowly turning into a not as fun version of itself, woe is us, and decided to really make us pay for it. I mean, if you did not like the old League of Legends, well, congratulations, you now have an entirely new game on your hands. Honestly, I'm kind of proud of Riot for seeing some of these sweeping changes. They really aren't pulling any punches with what they might do if they think it could make their game a little bit better. People complain about solo queue, bam, there is no more solo queue. People complain about top laners not having enough objectives to fight over top lane, boom, you know, have a new mini baron. People complain about games being too long, now every single game is so quick and snowbally it ends in under 30 minutes where you're either completely demolishing the enemy team to a point where you feel bad for them, or you're struggling to finish someone off like you're playing against a handlock that just dropped two Molten's Healbot Sun Fury. But I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on grinding through the frustrations that I might come across and hopefully come out on the other side alive. I invite any and all of you to join me, and uh, may the ELO gods be with you as you try and figure out who the fuck you're even supposed to play in what role. Thank you all very much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.